Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to show you how to get meteorological data from NASA's website. Thanks to this power project, we can access the data through the interface or by making API calls. If you scroll down, we can click on this Data Access Viewer Classic or the beta version. If you click on it, you are going to be able to download the data manually. In this menu, we can choose the type of the data we want. Let's choose, for example, sustainable buildings. After that, we have the frequency. Let's keep it daily. Then we have the location. We can specify the latitude and longitude. I will just drop a point quickly like this. And as you can see, the latitude and longitude values have been automatically updated. After that, we have the start and end date. I'll keep them like this. Here we can select the output file format. I'll choose CSV. And finally, we can select the features to extract from this website. So I'll click on this one and I will select just this tree just to, to see or just to show you how the output looks like. Okay, and finally, we can click on this submit button to download the data. Okay, so click on this CSV button. You can see that we have been able to download the data successfully. I'll just open it to show you how it looks like. Okay, so as you can see, this is how the data looks like. We have a description of the parameters that we have selected in the interface. And here we have the data. This is how we can extract the data from this website manually. But to do the same thing automatically, we will right click on this link. You can see that here they are saying that you can right click and copy this link. So I'll right click and copy the link. After that, we are going to open this parameter definitions page to read about the parameters that we can select. So you can see that we have a lot of them. This page will help us select the features we would like to have in our data set. Now, open your IDE and create a new notebook. Make sure to install the requests library because we are going to make API calls. Okay, let's import this library. Import requests. Choose the virtual environment that you have created or that you already have. Now, create a new list called parameters. For now, we will, we will keep it empty. And after selecting the parameters that I want, this is how the parameters variable looks like. Don't worry, we are, I am going to show you how to extract these values yourself. Go back to this parameter definitions page. Let's choose this parameter as an example. And as you can see, you have the name the abbreviation and the definition if you want to understand this parameter. Just copy the abbreviation and add it to your parameters list. Okay, so this is how to populate the parameters list. One important note, some parameters are not working and I will show you how to detect that. Let's run this cell and let's go back to the first website. Remember that I have told you to copy this link. So if you haven't done that already, copy it one more time. Let's go back to Visual Studio Code or your preferred IDE. And here I am going to paste this URL. So this is how it looks like. This is the endpoint that we are going to use to get the data. If we take a closer look at this link, we can see that the parameters are defined here after the parameters equal string and we use the comma symbol to separate between the parameters so just remove all these parameters keep it like this because we are going to add them dynamically let me show you how we do this so i'll add a new variable called parameters subset and it is going to be equal to this notation let me show you how what this does 
it will just concatenate the parameters and it will add the comma symbol between each parameter so let me run this as you can see so we have the first parameter then we have the comma symbol after that we have the second parameter etc okay so now let's see how to insert this inside this string so basically we are going to use the f string or the f notation here let's add curly braces like this and inside we can insert the parameters subset let's print the url to see if this is working awesome so as you can see we have parameters equal and then we have all the parameters inserted in this endpoint now let's make a request this is why i said that you need to install the requests library okay great so let's run this and let's see if this is going to work or not okay so we didn't get any error but to see the data we will use the response variable this variable stores the data in the text attribute so let me run this cell and as you can see in the header we have a description of the parameters that we have selected and then we have the actual data I told you before that some parameters don't work to test this you can replace this parameter subset with just one parameter just to test if that parameter is working or not we can run this cell and as you can see we get the data let me add a parameter that does not work just to show you how the output will look like I will choose this one I'll copy the abbreviation I will add it here at the end of this list here we have minus one to select the last element in this list let's make the request and as you can see this is what you get if the parameter is not working so you can go through the whole list just change the index and see if when you get this you can remove that corresponding parameter so for in, my, in my example I'll remove this one because it's not working but the other ones are working with no problems so here I will remove this and I'll change it by parameters subset let's run these two cells and let's continue now we are going to analyze the output and as I told you uh, let me open this in a text editor we have two parts we have the header and after that we have the actual data and we have this special character or special token that is called end header we are going to use it to split this text for this text or this string into two parts the first part it will contain the description and the second part will contain the actual data okay so this is how we split a string in python so you use the split function or split method and in this data parts list you have two items the first one contains the explanation I'll just run this to show you you can see that we have the explanation you can remove this begin header if you, if you don't want it and after that to get the actual data we can access the second element in this list but before that if you want to keep this description or explanation you can save the output to a text file let's see if this has worked yes so you can see that we have the description stored here so that you can understand the abbreviations quickly without going to the website and now let's look at the actual data as i said we are accessing the second item okay so this is the data great let's save this data as a csv file and now let's import it or let's read it as a pandas data frame great everything is working we can see the data as a data frame i just want to warn you that sometimes in the data you will have uh, minus 999 this value represents a missing value so if you try to do uh, data frame dot is now dot sum you will see that you will have no missing value 
This doesn't mean that you don't have none values. If you want to change this value to none, then you add this line df dot replace minus 999 with the no value. Now, if you run data dot is now dot sum, you can see that you have missing values. Okay, so make sure to add this line to get a sense or to make sure that either you have missing values or not in your data frame. We have arrived at the end of this video. I hope that you have gained something from it and that I have done a good job transmitting this knowledge to all of you. Thank you.